Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. A general reminder for those who do not know, MIC is having a one-year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit for our members, the event is 100% and exclusively free for annual and lifetime members. While lifetime, on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it, again, free for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up for this event, DM TBradley90 in MIC Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, we have a very special video for you guys this week as Austin, who goes by Aloha Trader, one of our head moderators in chat, returns for his episode 10 of his weekly Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time webinar. And this week, he's going to talk about analyzing your trades and Austin's favorite setup. And while today is just a preview of the full-length video, if you want to watch the full-length or any of our exclusive content, then become an MIC member. All right, so what we're going to talk about today, we're going to go over the key traders, and let me tell you, I am scraping the barrel this week for, for good trades, or even good trades that I didn't take to talk about. It's just been that slow. This is kind of what I've been talking about week after week after week when I say, what's to fear, what's to fear, what's to fear, the July earnings season. It's about the slowest time, I think, of the year. Like, an argument can be made, like, um, sometimes August is really slow, too, but I think this is the worst time of the year that for the small cap plan, July earning season, it's just, it's like, it's in summer and it's earning season, it's the pinnacle of slowness. So that's what time I think we're in now. So I think good news, I think we're only, you know, it only gets better from here. So we're gonna be going over the market sentiment. A um, Couple of trader topics that I get um, the most frequently asked questions of the week. Uh, yeah, good time to take a vacation. And I think a lot of people do, and that's why a lot of the liquidity is kind of not there that dies off really, really um, early. Um, we're gonna go over my favorite strategy, um, my favorite setup later on, and then we'll open the board for Q&A. So, um, yeah, so I had, a, I had a nice trade on Netflix early, early in the week. Um, it, was a, it was a really kind of like one of, if, if I had to label the most classic setup I have in the large cap world, it's probably this one. It's a relative weakness short. Um, and so, um, right around here, the spy was, um, kind of being pretty strong and Netflix wasn't really holding it. So like we, we got this nice tank out of the open while the, while the spy was holding pretty strong. So that immediately tells me that Netflix is weak. And this is coming off the context of this situation is Netflix is coming off of a huge earnings, um, beat down on their stock, right? Like it gapped down huge, well under support. And so I'm looking to kind of continue the fade a little bit, thinking that everybody is underwater. Everybody, there's a lot of people that need to sell, that there's basically going to be too much over overarching demand pressure, or sorry, selling pressure. And, um, and then so the next day, you know, uh, we, we held pretty good up here. And I was kind of surprised that we did hold very good up here. So um, the next day I was thinking that, that we should have a bounce. Like this is so faded off that maybe like with that strong close, Maybe there's more demand for the stock than, than I had originally realized because I expected a breakdown and didn't get it. So um, I was like, you know what? Maybe I can get this for a bounce, right? And so I tried to bounce attempt given the good hold yesterday. My target for this trade, um, I'm just checking to make sure I was recording, sorry. My target for this trade was that, um, uh, was like 15 to $18, um, trying to get you know above the, Kind of the open price or the open price of yesterday that's kind of where my idea was of the trade um and you know i quickly stopped out at green to red green to red is a really 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 powerful indicator right it's kind of the it's the basis of the first red day short and it's also it's probably i think next to support resistance it's you know it's it's probably and vwap like it's probably just the next most used indicator i think probably uh, maybe moving averages beat it but it's pretty up there, right? It's a very important, um, it's a very important indicator and it's very powerful and I don't ever fight it, right? If something goes red, it's really like, I'm being stubborn if I'm holding a stock long through a red or if I'm holding a short as it rips um, green, right? I'm being very stubborn if I'm holding that short or holding this long. So like most of the time um, I will always be 
um, mixing my trade at a red to green or a green to red cross and reassessing it later. Like I would have rebought, right? I would have rebought at this reclaim 311, but it never did the next trade. Um, I think then the next day, like I tried to short snap as it went up and what, you know, I, I got a little bit, uh, it's really funny as it popped up to 1650, I think I posted in chat like an idiot. I said, early shorts getting killed on snap. And thus then I decided to become one of them early shorts. It's, it, it's time stamped. I actually said that <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's in the large cap options room. You can, you can look at it. And then I go and just go and short it. Um, so my idea for this, for this trade on the front side was, Whenever you're shorting a front side, you should always have an estimation of what your range is going to be, right? Because you never want to go in blind, right? You need to have resistance levels you're playing off of. But I like to have resistance level I'm playing off of. But I also like to, you know, guess what range is going to be relevant. What, what range is the stock going to test? And so I picked 1650 to 17 and I got blown out of the water. So I was wrong on my range estimation, right? The good, good thing is, is that, my rule is that I never let myself go more than half size when, I, you know, before the trade starts to work. So if I'm on the front side or if I'm on the anticipation part of a trade, I both consider those front side, right? The anticipation part of a trade and some trades or the front side of a parabolic, both of these situations, my favorite rule, like, is never go half size before you're full. And it saves me every single time. Anyway, and then, so I traded Netflix again today, traded Netflix again today. and. So I took this trade because it, it goes into kind of what I wanted to talk about um, today in the webinar. So like I was really keen, like, oh, maybe I'm going to be able to show that like I did an example today, right? Like, so I was kind of super keen for it, um, which is why I was, I kind of allowed myself to get a little anticipation trade on it. Um, but anyway, so I Thing about Netflix, it had a huge bounce all the way back from 306, right? And we're up to 320. This is the big bounce. It got up near the top of the range from where the where it initially gapped down from a few days ago. So I'm like, this is kind of a large extended move. I'm I'm kind of hoping to get like a break a breakdown back down to the like a 320 level, you know, back down to the 320 or three like 1918 level, thinking that we maybe fade off at the end of the day after such a big run for two days and um i i kind of like i start in here and like and i knew like right as this happened i, I had a bad feeling that this was going to trap but i still put a little bit of an add on this because it was a little minor breakdown of 30 320 50 but what i was saving my bullets for was this big low right this was the big low this 323 was the level of the afternoon that I knew I was willing to hammer because I thought it would look so good if I was able to if I was able to show this in the webinar today. So I'm like I'm I'm more disappointed it didn't happen than I didn't even make money off it because it would have looked and been perfectly timed amazingness. But you know, like then I gave it I gave it one last short here right near my wrist. My wrist is 324.50. Like I'm not you know the, the the prior high. I gave it one last chance to reject and you know when it's holding 324, I just I get out. Yeah, so market sentiment. So I went over a little bit of this um, kind of right before the webinar, but um, the market has been such crap lately, right? Like the only thing that's really been like up is like Snap Beyond and Netflix, right? Um, like in the in like these are like on my list of of like active market participants. Like the only green ones are coming from large cap. Like all the all the small caps are just kind of dying, no volume, nothing, right? Like DMPI totally faded, MTP totally faded. EDAP totally faded, CHMA totally faded. Like um, the only ones that have been kind of working are ACHN, REKR, and they're not necessarily the most active. They're kind of like just slowly chugging up here. So I'm getting excited for these two in particular next week, ACHN and REKR. Um, OBLN too. I'm, I'm watching OBLN because it's a recent reverse split and I always have hope for those, right? It's a very classic setup. They like to run after they reverse split. So that's going to be on my watch list every single day um, this, this Thursday, this week and next week. Um, but yeah, just everything in small cap land has just kind of been down, right? And it's funny, last week we were kind of entering into the tankers market. Is I remember I had um, my, my ex on the tankers market, and here I think we're kind of into the dead market. All right, so yeah, so like last week we were right here going into the tankers market. Here I think we're going right here into the dead market. So it's, 
it seems to be in this summer like so i i noticed that in um like the busier times of the of the year like the buy now ask questions later market tends to last like weeks like a couple of weeks there's good action right there's a two three week period of good action right and and then there's like a two to three week period where like shorts are totally in control and then there's like a couple of weeks where it's dead right here it's like every single week it like we're, we're just moving right it's just like there's a there's a quick little flurry then everything tanks and then there's nothing like every week it's like we're, we're entering a new one so i think maybe the cycle gets smaller in the summer but like in the busier times it takes a longer to go full cycle so there are two different ways to analyze your trades and uh i, I want to I go over both of them obviously um so the first one is the obvious one like, and this is the one everyone kind of does the first one is how solid was your idea you know what was your thesis how how good was the thesis were you right were you wrong why were you right why were you wrong uh did the trade suck you know was it the best trade ever you know like you know, like what were, you know, what did you, did you, did you buy dries at a hundred or, you know what I mean? Or, you know, did you short net or did you short snap at $5? Right? Like, um, how solid was your idea? Um, so the questions that you need to kind of ask yourself and review when, when you're going over your trades and I would do this, I would honestly kind of, you can do this at the end of every day. I prefer to do it at the end of the week because then like you can look at multiple trades at once and see if there's a theme or a pattern to, your, your, your ideas. So I, I think the best time to do this is at the end of the week instead of the end of the day, but you know, whatever, you know, to each his own, right? Uh, so this is the strategy I kind of want to go over. Um, the overextended trend break. And it is my absolute favorite setup in the world. Like if I only, and I, and I went a little bit over, I went over this a little bit in the webinar, but it is my absolute favorite setup uh, to date. And it's a short setup. It's, it's, a, it's a bread and butter account building setup. And it used to happen all the, all the time, like all the time. I remember the trade that, that really turned me onto this. And like, it was a long time ago, I think it was HTTM or something. Like it really kind of turned my trading around when I just simplified this pattern. I, I think that was in 2016 or something. But um, anyway, so an overextended trend break is, is when a stock, a small cap runner normally um, can be a large cap runner, but the small cap runner is the bread and butter one for me. It's when a stock is just running and running and running and it's had multiple like pulls and, and a lot of short traps and it just keeps squeezing and it's just overextended. And it's the stock is very messy, right? But if, if you just zoom out, like literally just pick a five minute chart or like a 15 minute chart or a 10 minute chart or something, zoom out a little bit. And, and draw major, um, major, major, major um, highs and lows. And it's just trend 101. You're basically like an uptrend is defined by higher lows um, and a downtrend is defined by lower highs, right? So ideally, an up, like for me, this, this could be just my opinion, but I think it works the best, is a higher low um, is still intact as long as it's making higher lows or e equal or higher lows, um, even if it's not necessarily making higher highs, the trend is technically still intact as long as it hasn't made a lower low yet. Now, obviously it's ideal if it's making, you know, a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, and the, and the reverse for the short. As long as it's making lower highs, um, you know, like, you know, it can not be making necessarily lower lows, but the lower highs are what's important on the short. Um, but for me, like this is kind of the second half of it, the, the lower highs on, a, on an uptrend is the, the indicator that the lower low is coming next. And the, the lower high to the lower low is the trend 101 of a trend break, right? And whenever we find these, um, these super active, uh, runners, right? We find these super active runners. Um, the first, like we, we don't, we assume that small caps don't trend, but they totally do trend. They're just messy, right? Be aware the trend is messy, but, but we get so zoomed in, we get so focused, like our P and L's can be red or something. We're focused on our P and L. We're not, we're zoomed into the stock and we're not paying attention that the stock is actually just making the simple patterns that we learned when we were beginners. But, um, I think, 
when traders realize this, like when I realize this, like um, that the simple patterns work, but you need experienced eyes to see the simple patterns. Like that's when things kind of just turn around. That was a euphoric moment when I'm like, what's my favorite large cap setup? First Rende. But just because it's like the most comfortable, I think. First red day and relative weakness. Relative weakness shorts and first and first red day shorts. Like when I look back at all of my uh, large cap trades, um, the one that like I'm no, I'm most green on all the time is the relative weakness short. Oh yeah, you asked me this before. Sorry, I was gonna get to that. Austin, uh, wouldn't the Netflix trade a little bit? like trying to fight the trend at 322.30. Uh, trade a little bit like trying to fight the trend. Uh, 322.30 was previous state support level, never broke under and never broke authority at three. Right, um, right, exactly. It hadn't broken yet. So I was, I was definitely anticipating this trade a little bit, right? And I was definitely anticipating the trade a little bit. And that's why I, I didn't really like, um, like, the, what my thesis for the trade was that it was starting to look like it was going to kind of pull, right? So we were having this nice, this trend up here, but then like this was the first lower high. This is the first lower high and then a little bit of a low, you know, kind of a lower low right here, equal low or retest. It showed weakness to me. So I was like right up, right after this first lower high was when I started to think that we might be getting into some bearish territory here and this is where i felt like it was like the moment of truth right this is like a break of 323 and that's it so 323 definitely confirmed the thesis that you're right but um this this lower high is what kicked it off for me like why didn't this why didn't this keep breaking higher right so like middle of the day lower high maybe we start to, to taper off and i can i still like i, I would have liked to have seen it under 323 i think you know this might not have happened um um no i no i have none boggery none um just me that's why i'm i'm just i don't have friends during the week i only have friends on the weekend um bro uh, how do you deal with slow months weeks aside from vacation like it sucks um honestly like i mean i i take more naps like i take more naps like this like this is the first like a couple Sundays ago was the first Sunday I ever 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 like just stayed up right so like I, I do take a little bit more time off I take a little bit more naps I don't stay for the middle of the day right like after I've after I've been doing calls and, and stuff with an MIC I've just been leaving I have a kitty um But yeah, like I just take time off. I don't try to overstay. I try to nail and bail more in the mornings, right? I, I, I don't have a lot of super patience with a lot of my trades. Um, that's kind of how I deal with it. It sucks. What is the topic of your presentation on next month's Phillies event? Crap, I need to have a presentation. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't told I needed to have one, but like, I mean, I'll do one. Um, I don't know, honestly, what I would, what I would pick. Um, kind of hoping that'll be a vacation week. I don't know. I need one though. Um, do you typically, uh, so I don't know is the answer, sorry. Uh, do you typically base your relative weakness trade? Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's, it's normally just this buy. Like, um, it, like every now and then, like I will look at like a competitor right like i'll look at like if it's super relevant competitor like delta or american airlines or something then i'll look at that but like i, I mean I, I maybe make two trades like that a year uh so it's mostly the spy but you know i i could definitely justify using a um what's what's the finance word for it um a comp <laughs> a comp how do you identify deadline so I identify the death line as the last major support, the last major support. So um, it's my opinion that large cap stocks don't typically have death lines because um, the idea of a death line is that the stock is dead after and 
large caps don't really die. Small caps die, and then like a new one pops up, a new flower pops up the next day, right? So now a death line can happen on a large cap if there's a catalyst driving a large, a big large cap move. But then there's like a technical death line where maybe the catalyst runs it, runs its course and the stock goes back like an overblown catalyst and the stock goes back to where it was trading before the catalyst, even if it's a large cap. And I think kind of like a similar death line strategy can be applied to large caps, but I think most of the time it's with small caps and it's the last major support, the one where um, any reasonable longs, that's their last chance of the stock holding. I do have a kitty, uh, slow months, watch training videos, screen time with charts, track trades, track trades, you wanna start trading, yeah. Or even like trade them 10 shares. Like, you know what I mean? Like practice, right? I think 10 share trades are better than, than paper trades just that you're actually in it even, you know, like it's, you're not gonna lose any money, but like, I don't know, you're actually in it and you feel something, right? It's just practice. Um, does your FOMO intensify after missing a trade and how you curve it? Yeah, it does, absolutely. Uh, you deal with it. Um, you just, you just, you just, you just, you just ask yourself what you're going to ask yourself if that trade doesn't end perfectly, right? If you chase a stock up and it doesn't just keep going up and you end up selling like because you bought the top and you sell like because you can't handle being down this much when it pulls back and you end up selling the bottom of the low and then it, and then you eventually goes up higher but you couldn't hold the risk, you ask yourself how bad am I going to feel? That's how you curb it, right? You just you, you try to predict how ugly you're going to feel if the trade happens ugly. <laughs> That's how I curb it. Like, I, you know, I just like, how, like, am I, like, would I, would you be proud to show off this trade if it doesn't work? Would you take this trade again? That's how you do it. You anticipate your analysis of the trade and be like, if this doesn't work, like I want it to, and I end up stopping out, am I gonna be able to say, will I take this trade again? Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say, if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.